skills and knowledge areas, which every bioprofessional must know. And we are getting started now. Hello and welcome to Biotechnica's YouTube channel. And this question has come to me from one of my Watson scholar and a Crickstar scholar, uh, Amreen Khan. And um, she's one student who emails me almost on a daily basis with some sort of question or, you know, encouragement to me. And recently, she sent an email to me asking five questions. So I decided I'll make five videos because, uh, you know, uh, most of you have similar questions. So the question which she asked me is, as an MSc Life Sciences past student, which career suits me, which I have answered already in the previous video, and what skills or knowledge areas I should pursue to achieve this path? So I'm going to answer this question today. What skills or knowledge you should pursue to achieve your path to success. So last time I told you about a career path in R&D and research and development, regulatory affairs, clinical research and blah, blah, blah. So today we will talk about the skills and knowledge areas. Now before we get started, you have to answer the biggest question in the room, the biggest elephant in the room. And that is, you will see so many people going on internet and venting out their frustration saying that, oh, there is no scope, no future, no jobs in this field. But now you are like, I've already done my post-graduation and now you're telling me this, what should I do? So it's like you have already crossed 80% of the path and now somebody says you have to taken the wrong path. So what would you do? You will go back again 80%? No, right? Instead, you have to know this, that if you just cover 20% more, you can achieve success. And that 20% more, I'm going to talk in today's video. Now, the second thing which we have to know as a bioprofessional or a professional, okay? The first is, of course, the 80% you have already traveled. So instead of thinking that going back and changing your field, you can actually grow in your field, okay? Now, the second point for today is, as a professional, you have to know the value of time, okay? So let us let me break the entire year, okay, into two parts, okay? The first is working days. The second is weekends and of course holidays in between so let's forget the whole uh, you know festivals and holidays but at least weekends are fixed right so you have working days 200 and there are 100 weekends in any of the years right so as a professional you know you have to achieve more in less time right and you already know that everyone else in this world does not work on saturday and sunday right but you can work on those days while others are sleeping to gain more, achieve more, okay? Now, what exactly I mean to tell you here? That is, you see, in one year, you have worked 100 days extra on your skill development, on the things which I'm going to tell you. And in three years, you would have worked one year extra because others would have worked only 600 days. You would have worked 900 days, right? So you would have worked one year extra, right? So while others worked for three years, you worked for four years and three years itself, right? And that is where the value of time comes. So the first thing which I told you is you have already passed through the phase of not, you, you cannot really go back and do your bachelor's in some, some other field. Instead, move forward. And how do you achieve more success, more skills and more money or whatever you want to achieve in life? In less time is by, you know, um, doing more in less time. And that is utilizing your Saturday and Sunday. So whatever I'm going to tell you today, is going to help you if you are willing to sacrifice a bit more than what you're doing, okay? So now let's come to the skills and knowledge areas which you should pursue. Now the first thing which always, I always say my students is technical proficiency. You have to know this that whether you get into academia or industry or academia again after the industry, whichever or the freelancer route or the entrepreneur route, these are the four or five routes you may take. You will need technical proficiency at every stage. If you don't know how a microscope works, how a uh, electroporator works, how a micropipette works, how do you do uh, animal cell culture, how do you do uh, genome editing, whatever, whatever is your area of interest. So technical proficiency is important. There are two ways to update your technical proficiency. You can learn online through Biotechnica's platform 
and you can learn offline through the hands-on training which we provide. So that's one thing which you can do. Of course, a lot of people out there are providing the same things, but there they may not maintain the quality. At Biotechnica, we make sure that the quality is extremely important and extremely priority for us. So that, that is where technical proficiency is a must. You have to keep in mind, stay up to date with latest lab techniques and technologies, which is relevant to your field. Okay, now the next, the second uh, point which will be data analysis. So even though you know the techniques, even though you know what, how exactly it works, you get data at the end of the day. If you do not know how to analyze that data manually or automatically, so automatically you will need Python and coding and bioinformatics knowledge or manually if the data is small. So of course you can do your, you know, your own uh, stuff here. So data analysis, developing strong skill set in analyzing and interpreting scientific data is one skill set which you will need after your master's. Okay. Now the third is when you will enter the industry, of course, regulatory knowledge. Regulatory affairs is important. So if in case you want to make a career in regulatory affairs or even if you are a normal scientist in a, any lab, you need to know the regulatory knowledge. Okay. Understand the legal and regulatory language, regulatory landscape of the biotech industry. It is not as simple as it looks. Like, okay, if I want to make a laptop, or I want to make a software. I don't really need a law for that, right? But if I want to create a, uh, you know, genome-edited human or genome-edited plant or to bring a genome-edited fruit into the market, there is a law. There has to be a law because biotech creates product which is consumed by humans, okay? Software and IT creates product which is not consumed inside the body, right? It is just uh, through your eyes and ears and, you know, hands. So, yeah, that's how it is, right? That is why this is very important to know the regulatory knowledge, okay? Now, let's look at the fourth one, and that is project management. You know, my mentor told me that if you learn project management, you've got a superpower, okay? And I, I asked how, then he said the same thing. See, if you have the project management uh, skills, then you know how to... Uh, execute any project, any idea, and that is the most crucial part because any project in biotech is highly complicated, right? So learning project management is very important. And in fact, uh, in future, we plan to bring in a project management uh, courses also for all of you. Let me know in the comment section if you want that. Learn how to manage projects and learn how to um, overcome the obstacles which you'll face during a project and how to circumvent it. That is very, very crucial here. So that's your fourth or fifth point, which I uh, told you. The last and not the least is communication skills. Hey, you heard me, right? Communication, last five minutes, what I'm doing? Communication. If my communication is not proper, pr probably by now you would have switched off this video. So if you have the communication skills, if you develop the communication skills, you will be able to communicate with anyone effectively and you will be able to get your job done because you are going to work in a team and in that team you have to get your job done so if you are not able to say whatever you want to get done then it will never happen or probably you found a result you're not able to express it right so that is where communication skills comes handy and you can always learn that at biotechnica we do have a lot of communication skills in body language courses which you can enroll for so these were the i think um, four or five um, knowledge areas and skills broadly which you should pursue and uh, thanks to Amreen and thanks to all of you this video is now here please go ahead and uh, pursue this and if you have any questions comments or anything would you would like to learn or know or you know probably uh, you want me to make a video on that so let me know in the comment section or you can reach out to me at shaker at biotechnica.org if I'm free definitely I'll reply to you and of course uh, Biotechnica's YouTube, YouTube platform is always there where learning happens. Thank you so much. Keep shining. Bye-bye.